All right, welcome everyone to Excel Tutor. Today we are going to be solving some physics questions, particularly on motion from the jump past questions and jump series. But before we do that, I want you to hit the subscribe button for our following and consecutive notifications on the video tutorials we are to release next. Okay, and coming back to this question, it says a train with an initial velocity of 44 millimeter per second and an acceleration of minus 4 meter per second squared. Its velocity after 10 seconds is Note the question gave us our initial velocity u to be 44 meter per second. It also gave us an acceleration which is negative 4 meter per second squared. Automatically, that is, an, that is a deceleration because it is negative. It gave us our velocity to be um, our time to be 10 seconds and our final velocity. That's what we are looking for precisely. And the equation of motion best suited for this is v equals u plus a t our final velocity is what we're looking for our u is 44 meter per second our acceleration is minus 4 and our time is 10 so it's going to be our final answer that means our v equals 44 plus minus 4 times 10 is minus 40 so that's going to be 44 minus minus 40 and our final answer there is going to be 44 minus 40, which is equals to 4 meter per second. So our answer there is 4 meter per second. That's going to be the final velocity after 10 seconds. So you might be wondering how come the velocity, the final velocity has reduced to 4 meter per second, whereas initially it was 44 meter per second. Do not forget that the question says that the acceleration was minus 4 meter per second squared. That is, it was decelerating. I didn't mean it was just positive 4 meter per second squared. It means that the velocity, the final velocity will increase and be greater than the initial velocity. But it, since it was decelerating, its final velocity is going to be very low, especially when it's at time, the, the latest time is going to be at zero. So that's that for this question. All right, the second question says, a palm fruit dropped to the ground from the top of a tree 45 meter tall. How long does it take to reach the ground? A palm fruit is dropped from the top of a tree 45 meter tall and how long does it take to reach the ground since this palm fruit was dropped and not strewn it means that our initial velocity u equals zero not the difference it was dropped not strewn so our initial velocity equals zero and we are going to be having to find our time t that's the time it takes to reach the ground from here to this point Okay, the best way to the equation of motion that we can use is S equals U T plus 1 over 2 A T squared, where our S becomes the um becomes our H. H equals U T plus 1 over 2 G T squared for any vertical motion. So what's the next thing? Now putting in our parameters, we are going to be having our H to be equals to our u is zero times time which is what we're looking for plus 0.5 that is 1 over 2 0.5 times g which is 10 and times our time squared we're giving our s to be um 45 which is our h to be 45 because 0.5 times 10 will be 5 t squared so as you can see from here our 45 equals 5t squared 5 cancels 45 that would be 9 equals our t squared and the root of 9 will give us 3 seconds give us 3 seconds so the time it takes to reach the ground from a height of 45 meter is going to be 3 seconds and this is an application to all um, free fall whereas it is dropped and not thrown if it was thrown then we were going to be given the initial velocity u but since it was dropped then it means the ball dropped down to the to the floor with an initial velocity of zero and it's going to attain a particular final velocity of which we were not asked to calculate here in the question all right our question three here says an air force jet flying with a speed of 385 meter per second went past um an anti-aircraft machine gun that was supposed to be an an anti-aircraft machine gun how far is the aircraft five seconds later when the gun was fired how far was it how far will it be five seconds later when the gun was fired so let's assume this is our, our air force here 
and this is our machine gun here it flew past this machine gun and we asked to calculate that five seconds later what would be the distance here what would be the distance it has moved the distance it has moved when the gun of this machine gun is fired towards it okay then that means we have the velocity of our efforts to be 335 meter per seconds that's parameter given to us and we also have the time to be five seconds so they're trying to ask us that um, how much distance will it cover for the five seconds with this same velocity the moment the gun was shot how many distance how much distance will it cover five seconds later with the same velocity and the only way we can do that or the way we can solve that is by using our um, velocity equals distance over time this is our casual formula right so now the next thing is this we have to make our distance the subject of formula and that's d equals v t our velocity is given to be 335 times r5 so our final answer is going to be using our calculator 335 times 5 will give us 1675 meters 1675 meters so the total distance our Air Force jet flying here we, we cover with um, 335 meters per second in 5 seconds is 1675 meters. Uh, for question here says a man walks 1 km due east and then 1 km due north. His displacement is using our map bearing that is going to be like this, right? And our north towards this direction, our east towards the right. So the man is moving 1 km up and 1 km. To the right so our question here is to find its displacement from north to east which is the resultant displacement now how do we get that we call that when two vectors or scalars or whatever are perpendicular to each other the resultant can be gotten by using Pythagoras theorem and it states that c squared equals a squared plus b squared here our c squared is the resultant and it is the root of the two displacements a squared plus b squared so then what's our displacement given our r becomes root of a squared is one squared plus one squared and one squared plus one squared is going to be giving us um two so the answer here is root two now we can go further and complete the remaining question here what about if we ask to calculate the um we ask to calculate the angle we ask to calculate the angle of movement which is particularly yeah however if you ask calculate the angle the only way we can solve that is by using tan theta and tan theta says that um our opposite equals yeah tan theta says our opposite over adjacent our opposite here is one and our adjacent is also one so if you divide by our calculator that means our theta inverse of one is going to be what tan theta inverse of one is going to give us 44.99 so our direction there is 44.99, which is approximately 45 degree. Do you understand? Okay, let's move on to the next question. All right, the next question says, the echo of a sound from the bottom of an ocean is heard 2.5 seconds later. If the speed of sound in water is 1,400 meter per second, the depth of the ocean is, and let's draw the diagram first. Let's assume this is the source of the sound and this is our ocean depth or the ocean floor now and we send a sound to it it's going to take some time for it to come back to this source again and that's why it's called echo reflection of sound reflection of sound waves so as you can see the sound covers two times the original distance the first distance d to the right and the second distance d to the left and that's why the velocity of echo is always 2d over c to d over time okay now we were given our velocity we were given our time and we have to calculate this distance the total distance it has moved here the d here the depth so making it the subject of our formula 2d is equals to vt and our d equals vt over 2 and that means our 1400 times 2.5 seconds over 2 so what's our calculator saying 1400 times um 2.25 divided by 2 so our calculator says 1750 that was the final answer 1750 meters
Okay, I hope you understand. Uh, our sixth question says if a car starts from rest and moves with an acceleration of 10 meter per second squared for 10 seconds, the distance it covers in the last one second of its motion is the distance it covers in the last one second. Let's highlight like that last one second of its motion is so we're given an acceleration of the car to be 10 meter per second squared. <clears throat> we're given the initial velocity to be zero because it starts from rest and the time to be 10 seconds time to be 10 seconds so the question here says we should calculate the distance it covers in the last one second of its motion well first let's calculate the distance it covers in the 10 seconds of its entire time now that's by using our v equals u plus um okay we can use this this is invalid for us but we can use another equation we can use s equals ut plus 1 over 2 80 squared where s represents our distance our u is 0 times theta is 0 so that becomes 0 0.5 because of 1 over 2 times our acceleration which is um, 10 times our time which is also 10 squared so our distance the distance covers in time 10 seconds is going to be 0 0.5 times 10 times 10 squared that's going to be 500 meters so it covers a distance of 500 meters in 10 seconds now what about the distance it covers in nine seconds the ninth second the distance it covers in the ninth second is um our initial velocity is also zero and time is everything becomes zero here whereas for this one it's going to become 0 0.5 times our acceleration is still 10 but the time becomes nine that is our ninth second so using our calculator here we're going to be having 0 0.5 times 10 times 9 squared that is um 405 so the distance it covers in its ninth second is 405 meters so as you can see the distance when it's 10 seconds and as the distance when it is 9 seconds will give us the distance when it's at the last one second and that is equals to 500 minus 405 so the answer final answer here is going to be 95 meter so this is the distance it covers in the last second our uh, next question is a block of mass 2 kg resting on a smooth horizontal plane is acted upon simultaneously by two forces 10 newton due north and 10 newton due east the magnitude of the acceleration produced by the forces on the block is says we have um, a block of mass there is a block of mass it's resting on a horizontal smooth horizontal plane and it is acted upon by two forces our uh, 10 newton due north and Another 10 newton due east, 10 newton due north, and 10 newton due east. We have to calculate the magnitude of the acceleration produced by the two forces. But before we can do that, we have to first resolve our component in into one direction alone. So how do we do that? We are going to be using Pythagoras theorem, which says c squared equals a squared plus b squared, and that means our resultant is going to be r into root of our initial force force one which is in this direction the first force and the second force here plus force two squared so our r r equals root of 10 squared plus 10 squared and that will be 200 so what's going to be our root of 200 there root 200 and our calculator gives us 14.142 so our r equals 14.142 but that's not all given that our r equals 14.142 which is the resultant force acting on our mass of 2 kga we are asked to calculate the acceleration and we can do that by using our second law of newton which is that f equals mass times acceleration so our resultant force is 14.142 and the mass is 2 times acceleration so acceleration here is going to be 14.142 all over 2 so the final answer is going to be 7 meter per second squared